A humble soul, we checking back in, man. Um, we still in Orlando with it, we broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. Where we at, we downtown right now? Where we at in the city, dog? Yeah, man, we ducked off in the secluded spot. I don't even know where we at, but we somewhere. <laughs> uh, for sure, for sure. So yeah. let them know who we got in front of the camera, man. Yeah, this King Supreme, man, King Supreme. Gambino to the streets. Okay, okay. Um, just to get a little bit of a better understanding of who you are and your story, man. So you are a product of the west side of Orlando or you kind of bounce around the city, dog? Yeah, man, I, I came up on the west side, man. You know, it started off from at Mercy, you know what I mean, in the bricks, Lake Lawn. That's where I'm from. Shout out to my hood. I'll never forget it. So, so you said shouting out to that particular section. So um, just talk a little bit about your childhood, man, and coming up in that area of the city, bro. Well, I mean, from early on, I mean, honestly, it started out kind of rough, you know what I'm saying? Um, was exposed to a lot at an early age, you know, my family came from a broken home, you know what I mean, at, at a specific point early in age and it led to a lot of things. Uh, my mom, you know, she was, you know, going through something back then and um, just had a lot of experiences, man, like, you know, drug dealing, robbing, I mean, you name it. And um, eventually, you know, I wound up, you know, going off to prison for a long time. And um, it was a journey, it was a journey, it was a trial. And um, honestly, you know, it made me stronger, you know what I mean? Because um, I always had an optimistic uh, mindset towards, you know, everything that was taking place. You know, I never really looked at it as a situation that I would allow to take me down. But um, yeah, it was a trial, man, coming up as a kid, you know, seeing the, the killings, the shootings, um, the drugs, the violence, you know what I'm saying, in those areas. And, um, that's what it was, man. I mean, um, not to get too far ahead, so you said your mom went through some struggles early on, so um, single parent household, your father wasn't around? Yeah, during that period, uh, my father wasn't. You know, my mom, she um, kind of, you know, went left and uh, got on drugs for uh, an extensive amount of years, and um, that's what led to um, a lot of the dysfunctional things that took place on my behalf. So can, can you kind of paint the picture for the viewers as much as you are comfortable with sharing? Like, so as a child, your father's not around, your mom is there, but she's still battling her own, you know, issues with addiction. So like, what's that, what's that atmosphere like for you? Okay, well, to make it plain to see, mom was on crack and um, we had to survive the best way we can. So, you know, we went to engaging, you know, my sister, she, my mom only got two kids, everybody else, um, siblings came from my father. So during that point in life, you know, we had to survive, man, and we had to do whatever we had to do. And it led to uh, incarceration, it led to catching cases, it led to um, um, being around uh, uh, environments that had me just all over the place, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? And it's a blessing to still be here. You know what I mean? Because my mom going through that stage of getting on crack and she, she rode that wave for a long time. So, you know what I mean? We had a, a, a long track record of, you know, just having so much trial and error. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was a situation, bro, seeing all of that type of activity. But, you know, I'm grateful that it didn't take, you know, toll on my mind and my mental because I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm still evolving. I'm still strong. And um, I believe, you know, in my mind that I could achieve whatever I set my mind to accomplish. Now, that's 100, bro. And um, I guess we, we can kind of transition after this. But as far as like, what was that relationship like? with your mom like was there some type of resentment was there a distance because she was battling you know her addiction were you embarrassed to say that was your mom or did you still love her like what was that 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 that, that relationship like between you two that's a good question good question because honestly man like i said a little while ago that i always been optimistic about the whole 
situation, everything that took place. I never had in my mind that <clears throat> she did this or, you know, I'm going to blame her for it because life is life, man. Sometimes things happen. We just have to pick up, you know what I mean, from the bad things that take place. It's all in, it, all in the mental. And that's what's something that, you know, I embrace, you know, my mental um, capacities. And it allowed me to look at the situation in the positive. You know what I mean? And it, you look at me, I'm still here, still evolving. Young black man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, running three, four companies, currently in college. You know, very active in the community. Um, <clears throat> that's just what it is, man. It's all in the mental. And you know, my respect and my attachments to God, all that play a major role in who I am today. No, for sure, for sure. Um, and just talking about like you still, you still being able to be resilient, you know, and have a positive mind frame despite like those different challenges you've encountered since a child on up to the present point. Like from you seeing your, your moms like that to you say you surrounded by crime, you know, you seeing the murders, you seeing the drug dealing. Like at what point did you start to kind of flirt or? jump into that type of lifestyle or did that ever consume you i mean honestly bro it was it was choppy it, it was going back and forth because and i still ain't got it together all to this day you know what i'm saying because um it's just been it's been a rocky road man but through it all i'm pushing and i always looked at the situation like it's gonna get better I'm gonna make it better, you know. Sure. No, no matter what the circumstance was, I kept pushing. I never was like, man, I can't get through this, you know. I had that mentality of a lion or a bear in the jungle, like, man, I gotta rush through this, you know what I'm saying, knocking down all opposition, you know what I mean? Even when I was behind the gates in the prison, going from prison to prison to prison, and, you know, the masculation tactics that the system was using to emasculate my mind, I never let it broke me down. And I always had that mentality like, man, it ain't nothing in this world that I let interfere with my thoughts. You know what I mean? Despite of me being put in certain situations and circumstances where I had to survive, I never let it, you know, affect my mental. I still got love in my heart for humans, for human beings, for my community, for my people. You know what I mean? Despite of anything that I ever been through, it ain't a person walking this earth, you know, that I, I despise or I hate. You know what I'm saying? That's just who I am as a person. But I look at my past as a stepping stone for my future. And this is why I can find peace through the storm because I understand the peace. I understand the process. I understand the process of love and, and what it does to life and how it affects life and how it affects human beings. Now, for sure. Um, that's deep, man. And for you to still maintain like that type of point of view on everything, that's a blessing. And I'm sure it's it's good health-wise because if you allow certain stuff to consume you or over-consume you, it can lead to the stress. It can lead to the different problems, you know, internally, mentally, physically, all most of that, bro. Like the relationships with different people and all of that, bro. So um, you you mentioned incarceration a, a handful of times so far. So, but prior to that, like, bro, like, like, who were you as a person? Were you in the sports? Were you big on education? Were you a, a, a smart kid in, in school? Like, what what was it like for you coming up, bro? Yeah, man, when, when before all of it started, you know, I was a kid that, you know, I liked it to go to school. But like I said, early on, um, mom got on drugs real early. So that kind of like altered the path and um, led to me getting in the streets at an early age. I started selling crack, man, probably at the age of 12. You know what I'm saying? So it altered, you know, it changed the, the process of things. But, you know, um, Education was always something important to me. Information was, so I always liked to read books, always was attentive to information. So, you know, this is why, you know, I'm able to, you know, maneuver in different spaces even to this day. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. It never had any uh, plans, although you was, you know, you hustling. Did you ever have any intentions or interest in like going to college or anything like that or taking up a yeah, trade? Yeah, or? I actually did, man. And actually, as we're speaking, um, I'm currently in college right now. You know what I'm saying? I go to UCFM, Valencia, going to school for business. But um, yeah, I always wanted to empower myself. I always wanted to elevate. So 
in my mind, I, I, I had the mentality that, you know, whatever it takes, if it took school, if it took workshops, if it took me sitting down to, you know, an elder to get that information that I needed to, to keep pushing, you know what I mean? That's that's what my thing was. Even when I was in the streets, you know, um, uh, my big homies, you know, that, you know, that was around me, that showed me the game. I always been attentive to take, to get, receive games so I could, you know, surpass my position that I was currently in and get to the next level. Man, what was, I'm just curious to know on the outside looking in, like, what was that period of your life like when your mom, I don't want to keep going back to your mom, but just using this, as, using this as an example, your mom is on drugs, on crack, you're selling crack. Did it ever come to a point where you was selling to your moms? No, 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 hell no. No, that's, that's, that's a no-no, you know what I mean? We, we ain't riding the slow bus on that one, homie. No, you know what I mean? I ain't never, never, you know what I mean, uh, would do that to not just my mom or, you know, somebody who I was cool with or close to at heart. It didn't even make sense to me, you know what I'm saying? So that's a no-no. But have you heard of people doing that, though? Or? Yeah, I mean, you have. The streets going to be the streets, bro, and greed is greed. You know, some people don't have that type of morality, you know, to say, you know, I'm not going to do that. But me, on the other hand, you know, I don't value money, you know, to that degree, to that extent. For sure, for sure. I mean, um, how, how deep did it, did it get for you before you changed your life or before you hit incarceration? Like, what, was your arrest or your biz drug related or is... Yeah, man, we, we don't been down up through there for robbery, dope, I mean, you name it. We don't, we don't been there, homie. And it was all part of survival, you know what I'm saying? I just thank the most high, you know, that I'm still here, but it, it was revolving around some everything. Can, can you, um, for the viewers, man, just give them a little insight into, I guess, like one of your bids, or I, I think you shared with me off camera, like you wanted the first, or you was like a young. Uh, yeah, I was uh, definitely, I yeah, I was up, arrested. Uh, I yeah. was arrested in middle school and um, sent off to maximum security prison, you know, as a child. And, um, you know, back then, um, Prison was in a different space that it, it's in now, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was I was sent. And to be honest with you, um, I was illegally sent to uh, adult prison. I never was um, sentenced to juvenile institutions, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it played it played a good part, you know, on my behalf because I was around a lot of old heads that gave me the game and I was receptive to the game that they gave me. So, you know, it worked out and it's working out. What, what would cause a young man to be sent to, you said 13? Or? 13, 14, 15, yeah. Like, what, what, so what was the circumstances behind you going to prison at that age? Surviving, that's what it all boiled down to, a broken home, not being in a structured household where structured family members and, you know, being a victim of, of circumstances, being a victim of the environment. You know, that's what led to that situation. So, you know, I always try to now uh, understand the, the process of why people that age go through those things because I went through it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know, no, that's, that's real. I, I was saying like the particular, uh, the case though, or, or as much as you're comfortable with sharing. Oh, the case? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was drugs, homie, getting caught with guns, I caught, Drug cases, I was, you know, young and in the hood, you know, selling crack, you know what I mean? I always kept a, a, a strap on me, so I, I caught uh, multiple uh, possession of firearm charges at an early age. I was in and out of juvenile facilities, the juvenile programs, uh, had youth counselors, I mean, you name it, but it still boiled down to not being in a structured household that would stabilize me to the point that, you know, I could live a better life, you know what I'm saying? So that's what, that's where it came from. All, all together, how long did you do in, in jail and in prison? All together in the system, starting from juvenile all the way to prison, like close to 20, 20 plus years. 20 plus years yeah. of your life given to the system. Right, right. Like, what was the most humbling part of that whole experience for you? The most humbling part, man, is that I had to understand and tap into my humility as a human being and understand that 
you know, through any dark time, through any dark day, you got to believe and you got to have faith. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if you don't tap into your faith, then it's like, it's all in vain. You know what I'm saying? And it helped me elevate by keeping my mind focused and going forward. And it, many times I fell this way, I fell that way, but I still had my faith to know and believe that one day it was going to get better. Oh, for sure. And uh, I know you mentioned like like the hustling, that kind of led to it, you just being a product of your environment. Like in Orlando, man, I'm familiar with like certain crews and obviously you got the street rap, you know, and how that can lead to certain beefs and stuff like that. But it's also uh, it's also a, a, a gang element as well. Did right. that ever kind of take you in too? Or? No, man, I ain't, I ain't gonna even count with you, bro. I never really, in uh, much respect to all them boys, you know, it's love for them. I know a lot of homies that's rocking, but I never got into um, the gang activity, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was affiliated with certain cats on all different sides, I, I don't I have, got homies that's, that's Crip, I got homies that's GDs, I got homies that's Bloods, you know, I got homies that's Latin Kings, but you know, my thing was surviving, bro, getting that money, getting to that bag to take care of my family and take care of the people that was around me. And yeah, it's crazy. So you was even able to navigate through prison without joining anything. Exactly. Yeah. So what's the survival for somebody who unfortunately may find themselves in a situation where they got to do some time? Like what's some some do's and don'ts when you behind the wall, bro? I mean, honestly, bro, I, uh, it's, it's, that's man, you just got to have it in your home because no matter where I go, I tap in and, you know, it's respected. You know, it, it got to come from here. Some guys go down their power and, you know, you, 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 they don't make it, you feel me? But uh, I can't speak for them kind because I got a lion in the bad me, man. I can go sit down with a snake. I can go sit down with a bear. I can go sit down with a lion. I can go sit down with a dove, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how I move. So more so, you say it has to be like internally. You just gotta. Yeah, it gotta be. You just gotta be a man. You gotta be a man. You gotta be a man, and that, that's something that you know I, I do very well. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, so second that, so you got the you got the twenty plus. You got the twenty years behind you. You you did the hustling. So man, you don't mention you in college. You working on helping young brothers who may be down that path, going towards that path, then becoming a, um, a, another statistic. Like, so what are you doing now, brother, to kind of make an impact in your community? I mean, man, we're doing so much right now. And um, I'll elaborate on that. Then I'll allow my partner, uh, Miles Moraine, he's very active day in and day out. We actually running three, four companies right now. And um, we're in the social justice reform. Um, we into the nonprofit sector, we into the mentoring, we feed the homeless. Actually, right now, man, we got multiple uh, transition homes where we housing people off the streets, jails and uh, state and federal institutions, and um, just helping them make that transition where they can come back into society right. and live a better life. Man, and with you being somebody who's been a, a person who was incarcerated at one point in time and having to get back out and and rebuild, you know, did you have a support system in your corner or did you kind of have to start from scratch, like finding house and finding employment, you know, getting your, your driver's license again and, you know, this, that, this, you know, this, that, and the third, you know? See, and that's a good question because anytime I'm incarcerated, I always sit down and, and prepare myself, you know, so far as like, uh, with my agenda for when I'm released, like the first week, you taking care of your license. I mean, whatever it takes to solidify myself in society. But I do have a strong support system, you know what I'm saying? And I, the bank accounts, uh, working on the credit, all of that be on my agenda walking out of the gate. You know what I'm saying? But I have people that pour into me, be like, hey man, make sure you got this on your agenda. You're doing this, you're doing that. So that helps me to make that transition a, a, a lot more smoother. Even my little brother, Miles Moraine, who's gonna be speaking in, in, in a couple minutes, you know, he's very active with a lot of that. You know, he ain't never really been to prison, but he's a very clever young dude, you know, and um, we, we go back and forth, man. Not just him, my, you know, my family, my girl, you know, you, you name it. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you mentioned that, like the tra transitional housing, because that's important for somebody to have them resources, you know, when you kind of getting back out there and start from scratch, whether it's incarceration or homelessness or, 
you may be going through just some type of financial hardship and you yeah. need that, you know, to yeah. kind of rely on. So that's yeah. that's a dope thing to know that you kind of got your hand in that for Orlando. Right, right. And it's an epidemic right now, man, with the housing crisis, you know, the increase in rent. It's crazy. And, um, you know, we even fight and advocate for affordable housing. My little brother, he's been a part of that initiative as well. So we understand, you know, uh, the, the hindrances and that people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we can assist in any form or fashion, man, we move quick. We don't wait till months later. We get very active into the situation and we move. Can you talk about the current climate when it comes to the underprivileged in Orlando, specifically like minorities, like just for example, like black males, young black males coming up, man, who may be in a similar environment as how you were when you came up, you know, where they, they, they surrounded by the poverty, they surrounded by the crime, they see the gangs, they may not have an interest in becoming a doctor versus all, oh, man, I see the hustler who got, you know, the nice whip and the bankroll and this, that, and the third, they enticed by that lifestyle. Like, what are y'all doing to kind of step into those types of uh, youngsters' lives to kind of guide them straight? And that's something that I, I really have, you know, a strong compassion for, like, because I've been through it and I know the detrimentals behind it getting caught up, you know, especially now in, in the times we're living in now, you can catch the wrong case and you never see daylight again. So we got this, um, this model, um, you know, of helping people connect the dots. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of it's employment, uh, uh, car, uh, automobiles, health insurance, life insurance, we connect the dots. Like, hey bro, this is what you need, you know, to get on point. So you'll be effective as a father, as a brother, as a man of the community, you know what I'm saying? So we, we push these things in these brothers space so they can have, you know, access to them. And if we don't have the expertise in a specific area, we got partners that we call in and be like, hey man, such and such, he needs this, can you assist him? And nine times out of 10, a lot of our partners that we partner with, they be like, oh yeah, man, I help him out. You know, send him to my office or, or I meet up with him. So, you know, that's how we kicking game on that tip. Man, so, so for somebody, some 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 young brother, or even somebody you know, a grown man that needs some type of help, and they would like to tap in and, and see like the type of resources y'all have available that they, they can possibly utilize. Like, how would they go about connecting with y'all, bro? Well, you know, it's a lot of folks, man, that you know they own us now. But you know, our page and our website let your voice be heard. You know, uh, the BGU Brothers Get Up page email, um, website is, is coming real soon. It's up under construction right now, but we all over um, um, social media. Let your voice be heard. You know, tap in, reach out to us, man. I don't care what part of the world you in, what community you in, man, tap in to us, reach out to us. Uh, I'm King X Supreme on Facebook. You know, I'm down for any of my brothers. I don't care if you're in Africa, if you're in Spain. Man, we got to change a lot of things that's going on within our community. And that's where we stand. Man, dope, man. It's dope to chop it up with you, bro. Like, for somebody who's kind of down on a, I don't want to say down on a luck, but they may be going through something mentally, whether it's, you know, financially or they got a broken household, like you, like you mentioned, or they may be trying to rebuild and get back on their feet. Like, what's some words of wisdom or some game that you can give them, bro, to kind of put a little battery in their back, bro, to keep, keep going, stay motivated? And I get them, I get them to pieces, because this is a, a question that's always posed to me, like, man, how did you survive through all the hardship that you went through, all of the adversity, you know, coming up as a child? And I never look back, and I keep an optimistic mindset towards everything that's going on, and I keep my faith. So you got to believe in you. You got to understand the power in you. You can't allow the circumstances that you face to break you down. You got to know by all means necessary, I'm going to get through this. You know what I'm saying? And keep pushing, pushing, pushing every day. It don't be times, man, where it was people around me in circumstances in prison. They killing themselves. They hanging themselves. And the administration of the prisons would come to me and they said, man, are you okay? Uh, you think about harming yourself? I'm like, who? Hey. Hey, you don't lost your mind, home. That ain't that ain't finna happen. I'm, I'm I'm there. Like that's not finna happen. I promise you, I'm there. You'll harm yourself, boy, before I harm me. But I tell people to keep going. Don't stop, because eventually, at some point, things are gonna change. 
thing. That's a good game you drop, bro. Some, 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 some real words of wisdom, man. And the key I, I've realized throughout this whole conversation has been like centered around faith. So you've even like motion, like making a cross, you know. Um, like I guess you count, you come from a religious background or a spiritual household, or you, you have a faith in the Lord. I mean, talk about that, dog. Yeah, man. My mom is an ordained minister. You know, she developed into that later on after she wound up, you know, rebounding from her past and things she was going through. But she brought us up, you know, uh, in the church. You know what I'm saying? So I can relate to that. Everything that I learned as a child, it still sticks with me. You know, my, my father come from an Islamic back, background, so I can relate to both worlds. A lot of my uh, uh, character traits and behavior patterns come from Islam, so far as with my discipline, my eating habits, but I most definitely um, stand on my spiritual um, position day, day in and day out, man, in order to get through, you know, the things that I go through in life. Now that's, that's 100, man. So you said, so it's, it's not just faith-based, so you into, like, the diet and, like, what, what's your diet like? Or your well, workout I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, man. I, I really too much, you know, I don't really eat sweets. I don't, I never use drugs, don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke cigarettes. You know, I eat fruits and drink juices a lot, eat nuts. Um, you know, just, I'm, I'm, and I've been like that for a long time, bro, like, since I was a jit. You know what I'm saying? You, get, you see how good is, you know what I'm saying, nigga? You feel me? No homo shit, but you know, I take care of myself, bro. That's just what it is. You feel me? No, oh, for sure. <laughs> so for somebody who wants to potentially make a, like, a change when it comes to their diet, you know, and just their lifestyle, like any like, I guess two or three tips or some game you can drop on making that transition? Man, I ain't gonna be front with you, bro. That's a hard one, cause like, you got to be disciplined to eat like that. I eat like somebody from a foreign country, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like sodas. And a lot of times, I don't even like speaking on it because, like, that ain't something that's common that you come across every day. But I will tell, you know, people that, you know, just get in tune with your health. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to take care of yourself if you want to live, out, you know, live longer on this earth, you know what I'm saying? Take care of yourself, work out, eat healthy. You know, it's, it's better for the mental as well. You know what I'm saying? When you're eating healthy, you're putting good nutrition and vitamins and nutrients inside your body. You know, it helps you out. It makes you move, you know, it keeps your stamina up in, in many different areas. You know what I'm saying? All of that is good. No, for sure, for sure. And just, just lastly, dog, um they even saying that, bro, it, it can be a struggle. Like you mentioned the discipline, like, go weeks eating good eating clean working out but then you find yourself in that slump it's kind of hard to get back on that routine that you had previously but um but yeah i was just curious man because like you you look like you know a clean cut guy you don't you, you don't look out of shape you know what i'm saying the way you articulate yourself and i'm sure all that comes together mm -hmm. plays a role the faith the diet the education you know yeah, what i'm saying definitely. the interaction having a good support system all of that you know um but but what i was gonna say man like um I did an interview um, with a with a Florida rapper, with Orlando rapper Armstrong, and you were around for the interview. So aside from just the community activism, you had you have or you had a hand in the music, or how did you connect with people like that? Yeah, man, me and Strong, and we we came up, we came up, you know, back then, and um, during the period when I tell you, you know, all the crimes and stuff was being committed, and. Um, it was a journey, bro. You know, a lot of, a lot of activity. You know, certain stuff I want to elaborate on because of uh, incrimination type shit. But uh, you know, it was, it was a lot going on, bro. And we survived it. It was a lot of pressure in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Niggas running with monsters. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we we did whatever we had to do to survive. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how we move. But um, yeah, Armstrong. In fact, me and bro born on the same day, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we got a lot of similarities on specific things, but um, it was pressure in the streets, man, just to, you know, sum that up, and that, you know, answers your question. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, I was just curious, but you never personally tried your hand at music or anything like that? No, bro, and to be honest with you, I can, I can write, but music never really been my thing, you know what I'm saying? I went in the lab a couple of times. Actually, I got a song on Facebook called, I mean, on, on YouTube called Can You Stand the Rain uh, by Gambino. Then I got another song that I wrote for Tupac. It's called um, 
Pac Love, P A C L U V. Um, Gambino featuring VIC, a song I wrote for Tupac when I was in prison. Um, I think the same night he died, I started writing that song. I was on lockdown, on um, mil um, yeah, on lockdown in prison, and I wrote that song. Man, can you, can you take us back to that time so you remember the the, the night or the day that Pac? Uh, well, I, I know he didn't necessarily die the night he was shot. He died days later, but you remember that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was man on on on. Um, Master security lockdown in um, confinement, and uh, we had radios, so it was all over the radio that Tupac had got hit. So you know, you know, brothers was going crazy because back then, you know, Tupac was the idol of the hood. You know, that was the icon, and uh, he 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 was felt, you know, by street cats. So you know, we took that hard, man, and a lot of brothers, you know. It, 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 it was riots inside the prison when Tupac died. It was riots. Riots, yeah. Wow. Most definitely, it was riots. That paints that paints a picture for a, a young a young person who may be viewing this to kind of understand like the impact that Pac had, you know, because he still loved. He's he's been going he's been gone for years now, but people still consider him to be the, the greatest man. Right, you know? right. He's still a, a hot topic of discussion. But uh, man, I appreciate you uh, you chopping it up with a humble soul, man. Any any lasting words you want to drop on the viewers? Or man, just being honest, man. You know, my brother just pulled up. You know, get him to confide in this uh, in this interview. You know, let him know, and he can let you know a little bit. You know, in detail about our experiences. You know, what we got going on. You can hear it from another perspective. But uh, pretty much, man, you know, I encourage you as well to keep doing your thing, keep elevating, keep empowering, you know, what you got going on and the people that you coming in contact with, because we all was put on this earth for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? So you living out your purpose right now by even being in this space with me on this specific day, allowing all this to take place. For sure, for sure. You know, so I appreciate that. Dog. Just keep going, bro. No, no, it's 100, man. You said if they want to get up with you on Instagram, on social media, anything like yeah, yeah, you can tap in, man. Uh, King X Supreme on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, I mean, on um, Instagram, it's BGU407. Again, BGU407, tap in, man. We're taking this movement worldwide, you know, trying to help elevate our brothers, man. Y'all tap in, because it's love. One. Sure, 100.